four minutes left to play or 40 minutes left to play. Is that, yeah. Is uh -huh. that, okay. I didn't know if it was like 33rd minute or oh, no. I no, I would say I would count it down because that's what the clock does. Yeah. Okay. Welcome in, Ohio Bobcat fans. Apologies, we're coming in late here. 43 minutes left in the first half between the Ohio Bobcats and Cleveland State Vikings. It's time for soccer here at Chesterfield. Hello again, everybody. Brandon Monty with you alongside Noah Wolf as the Bobcats on the attack here, moving from right to left. Across into the 18-yard box is deflected as Cleveland State tries to clear things out here. Bobcats still on the attack as they will... Force the ball out of bounds to the left side. It'll be a throw in for the Bobcats. Good attacking energy from Ohio so far. This is how you expect a team that's 2 0 to come out and play. Pressing forward right off the bat and trying to create those opportunities. Ohio looking for some revenge against this Cleveland State team. We'll see as a header off the crossbar just above the goal. Just missing there. Bobcats getting plenty of early opportunities. A beautiful cross right inside the six-yard box just in front of the goalie, but the header just a bit too upstairs, and now a goal kick for Cleveland State. Impressive chance, though, for Ohio. A beautiful cross, and the header was nearly perfect from, I believe, Serena Deerig in the middle of the box there. Deerig yet to be involved in a goal this season, but she's a big playmaker for Ohio. Starting lineups today, first for the Ohio Bobcats, Sam Wexel is the goalkeeper. Paige Knorr and Olivia Sensky out there with Jenny Santa Caterina. Then it's Olivia Maleski, Victoria Breeden, Abby Townsend, and Sydney Leckie out there with Serena Deary, Courtney Dagardas, and Morgan Kalika. Ohio now on the attack once again, moving from right to left, going with their white uniforms and green shorts. As they now move in, and a cut here. Here's an opportunity for the Bobcats, and they say offside. Offside on Sydney Leckie. Jumped the gun just a bit too early there, and another goal kick coming for Cleveland State. But, Noah, already we're seeing this Bobcat team putting the Vikings on their heels. Yeah, Ohio, whenever they get in possession, they're just looking not to keep it, not to play the ball around. They're, they're saying, how can I get how can I get this ball forward? How can I create a scoring chance? And that's exactly how Ohio should be playing. It took them a little while to get that goal against Northern Kentucky, against a very tough North squad in Kentucky as well. But a one nothing victory for the Bobcats. That, that game was also revenge for Ohio. And again, as we mentioned in the pregame show, a little revenge game today for the Ohio Bobcats. They fell 4 nothing last year to Cleveland State, so you have to believe that there are a bit more implications on the line today as Abby Townsend tries to cross one in, but it's swallowed up by the Cleveland State goalkeeper, Stevie Holbrook, who was the Horizon League Defensive Player of the Week last year and started all 18 games, currently 17 saves, 94% save percentage, has done a phenomenal job this year, Noah, for the Vikings. Yeah, she's only given up one goal, and you said it, she's been called into action for 17 saves. I mean, that's, those are some incredible numbers that Holbrook puts up. She's the def defensive player of the week in the Horizon League right now for her, her efforts on the line. And it, it's been a season for Cleveland State where they haven't given up a lot of chances. They also haven't gotten a lot of chances, but they've given up more shots and more shots on goals than they've had for themselves, yet they find themselves on their winning record. Townsend gives a tap to Molesky. She tries to lead Deer again, but just... A little too presumptuous there into Holbrook's hands. And now the Vikings with possession as we look at their starting lineup. McKenna Donahue out there with Bianca Sarti, Grace Grant, Grace Krosky, Brianna Niedermeyer, and Elena Gutloff. As Lena Feltovich also out with Essence Kennedy, Tony Dixon, Kayla Ransom, and Stevie Holbrook, the goalkeeper, is now the Vikings pushing, moving from left to right on the right side of the field. And now a kick out of bounds from Lena Feltovich, a little miscommunication there 
between her and Essence Kennedy, and now Ohio will have a throw-in. And Noah, miscommunication on offense for the Vikings. They have a lot of offense to replace this year. As you mentioned, 18 of their 30 goals from last season, including all four of their goals from their game against Ohio, gone. Right. They they are, are looking. They're, they're a team that's looking for a new identity because they've got some good goal scorers returning like uh, – well, they've got a few goals returning. Brianna Niedermeyer had a goal last year. She's been key in the midfield for, for Cleveland State for uh, many years, but they, they, they don't have some of the key players that they had last year. They had four goal scorers in the game against Ohio. All four of those players left. And for Cleveland State, last year was a great year of transition, a record-setting one. They had 11 wins for the first and only time in program history. But now that they got to kind of find a way to rebuild with the pieces that they still have. Now Ohio on the attack on the left side. Here's Lecky. Leads Townsend. Townsend looking to cross. Does so. And it's deflected by Cleveland State. And now they'll clear it out. And Ohio offensively led by the three-headed monster of Olivia Molesky. Abby Townsend and Sydney Leckie, each with a goal this year. They really put a lot of pressure on opposing defenses, Noah. Absolutely. They're always looking for ways to score. And what head coach Aaron Rodgers told me, as Sam Wexel's called into action for the first time, what, what Aaron Rodgers told me is that those three, and really the whole team, but especially those three who are always in scoring chances, they don't really care who scores. If you saw the video of the Northern Kentucky goal, or the goal that they had against Northern Kentucky, it was... Abby Townsend running down the left side. She had a great run, and, and she had the ball. She had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with the keeper. Instead, she played it to Molesky for an easy tap-in. And w what Aaron Rodgers said, and I think what anybody would say seeing that video, is she had every right to shoot. But she found an even better opportunity for the one sure goal, and that, that was the difference. Ohio now trying to move from right to left here in the screen. Cleveland State with the ball. Here's Grace Grant. Grant trying to lead Essence Kennedy, but it's stolen away by Paige Knorr. Collected out of bounds, and the ball will stay with Cleveland State. And Noah, both programs really on the rise. Last year, a phenomenal season for these Ohio Bobcats. Off to a great start this year. Aaron Rodgers really changing the culture of this team, as now Abby Townsend will look to push for the Bobcats. Townsend moving in with three Vikings in front of her. Tries to go to work and put on some dribbling moves. Now moves to the left side of the 18-yard box. Is bumped, but now regains her control and tries to reset. And a strike now is in the back of just over the top of the net. Excuse me. What a strike from Jenny Santa Catarina. One time off the feed from Abby Townsend with the left boot, but it just sailed over the goal and really caught the whole Cleveland State Viking defense by surprise. I don't think anyone was expecting Santa Catarina to shoot that one. She had a goal last season and certainly has uh, plenty of scoring um, skill up front or I guess in the midfield does Santa Catarina. And that's kind of her bread and butter is the curling long shot. But she hasn't gotten the chance to do that too much this season in the two games. So to see her just release like that and just be over the top of the crossbar. I mean, what an effort from Santa Catarina. You hope that that one gets just a little bit closer the next time. It was just her second shot of the year is now Cleveland State on the offensive attack. As they try to clear into the box, it's deflected by Deary. And now a little collision underneath, a lot of physical play here early on. These are two very defensive-minded teams. As now Cleveland State will try a strike and it sails over the net for Elena Gutlove, who already has one goal on the year and leads the team with two points. Well, they say it's deflected over the net, so Cleveland State is going to get a corner kick. Ohio has already given up more corners this season than they've earned for themselves. This is the 10th corner kick to an Ohio opponent this season compared to seven that Ohio has had for themselves. Lena Feltovich will be the corner kicker for the Vikings. Out of the left corner, Feltovich, a two-time state champion at Walsh Jesuit High School, sends the kick away, and it's deflected. And now Abby Townsend moving on the left side, but can't quite get to the ball before Cleveland State's 
Kayla Ransom knocks it out, and Ohio will have possession. Yeah, that was kind of a 50-50 ball between Abby Townsend and Kyla Ransom. And Ransom just able to get there, deflected away. But nearly a great counter opportunity for Ohio as they try to set up their offense for real now. 33 minutes to go in the first half. Still nothing, nothing between Ohio and Cleveland State. As now Sydney Leckie steals the ball and looks to go on the attack and leaves Lena Feltovich on skates with the dribble moves. Now in the 18 yard box, looks to cross and it's deflected. A beautiful defensive effort by Brianna Niedermeyer to clear, but the Bobcats regain it. Now another shot towards the goal is swallowed up by Stevie Holbrook. What a cross by Sydney Lecky, and you said the dribble moves. Spectacular for Lecky to put herself in that same position and then to release a ball as good as that one. But another sort of 50-50 ball, and Serena Dierig was just a half step behind Brianna Niedermeyer and Cleveland State. I, I don't want to say they lucked out because it was a lot of skill from Niedermeyer to get to that ball, but they, they do catch a break as Ohio unable to score on what looked like a golden cross. They've definitely given themselves a lot of opportunities early on. So they've consistently been in that six yard box putting a lot of pressure on Stevie Holbrook but as we mentioned a phenomenal goalie for the Vikings is Holbrook. Now they're on offense but Sidney Leckie earns the ball now gets it over to Abby Townsend. 32 and a half minutes to go first half still no score between Ohio and Cleveland State. Now Cleveland State collects the ball. This is Tony Dixon, a 5'8", redshirt senior. Now gets it over to Elena Gutlove. One of the biggest offensive options for the Vikings this year, putting her dribble moves on display. Now gets it inside to Kennedy. She fires away, and it sails out of bounds far to the left of the goal, and it'll be a goal kick for the Bobcats. Yeah, I think Kennedy there was looking for a cross. Couldn't quite keep it down. Or I suppose if she was looking for the shot, she put it a little bit too far wide. But for Kennedy there, I think she realized all of her momentum was taking her toward the back line. And she needed to find somebody else to play that ball. She just couldn't quite control it and keep it far enough down for a Cleveland State, another Cleveland State attacker to get there. Now Cleveland State with possession after Olivia Sensky. Sends a boot with the right foot out of bounds. Now Cleveland State working from the left side. Running up the field now is McKenna Donahue. Two-time all-league and all-area player at Twinsburg High School in the Cleveland area. And now Elena Gutlove. A Butler transfer. Tries to enter to Canady, but a little too far. And it's picked up by Sam Wexel who's making her first start of the year. And Noah, she did not play at all last year. Played in the second half of the Bobcats' last victory against Northern Kentucky, replacing Sidney Malham, the starting goalie, who was out with an injury. Right. For, for Sam Wexel, Aaron Rodgers, who's a goalkeeper himself, has a lot of confidence in the way that Wexel can play the game. And while she, didn't, she wasn't marked down for a save or a goal in that Northern Kentucky game, uh, in, in my meeting with uh, Rogers this week, he made sure to pull up a video of late in the game, I believe less than five minutes to go, and Northern Kentucky had a corner kick. They swung it up high, and Wexel just came out, made the two-handed catch, and put an end to what was a very dangerous ball. And, and Rogers said, well, she's, not gonna, she's never going to get credit for a save for that, but that absolutely counts in my book as a save just because of how important that play was. It was a one goal lead for Ohio at that time. And Wexel just came out, commanded her six yard box and made sure that she was the one with the ball. And it's, it's as simple as that. Wexel certainly has a lot of ability. The career shutout record at Norwin High School with 53. He was all state and all conference as a senior as well as Ohio now on offense, moving on the left side of the field, and Feltovich unable to get a good boot on it, and Sydney Leckie capitalizes. Now she tries to strike, but it's far right of the goal, closer to the scoreboard, and it'll be a goal kick now for Cleveland State, perhaps just a little too anxious there with Sydney Leckie. I don't think she quite settled the ball down before she put her boot through it, and 
she was trying to get toward the right side of the ball and I think ended up kicking it on the left side of the ball, so curling it away from the goal rather than toward it. I think Leckie probably realized while that was going on that if she didn't swing right now, the ball's going to get away from her. And Feltovich got a little too careless with the ball there. Leckie not quite able to take advantage, though, as now Olivia Molesky unable to handle the goal kick. It's booted out of play, and it'll be Viking possession. Cleveland State, 1-0-1 on the year. 2-1 victory in double overtime in their last contest against Akron. Started off the year with a nothing-nothing draw against Kent State. This is their third MAC opponent out of four to start the year. They will take on Miami, Ohio. Their next matchup on Sunday, as for the Bobcats, they are 2-0, and Noah, two coaches in these teams that have really transformed their programs over these last couple of years, and Dallas Boyer and Aaron Rodgers both having record-setting seasons last year. Right, Boyer came in to this program. This is, his, this is just his third season, so in his second year, the fact that he was able to Lead get his team, team to the conference title. Exactly. The, well, the conference title game, anyway, um, which was the only time that the Cleveland State Vikings – have played in the Ryzen League Championship game. But I mean what what a what a turnaround for, for this Cleveland State team as Ohio now enters. A header attempt from Serena Deary goes out of bounds. Wasn't quite able to get all of it. And now a goal kick coming up for Cleveland State. And going back to these programs Ohio fourth in the MAC last year, just eight goals allowed in MAC play. That was the second fewest in the conference, and the seventh seven shutouts their most since 2004. And then Cleveland State, a program record 11 wins. So as we mentioned, both programs on the rise, and both with high expectations to start this season. Yeah, and for Aaron Rodgers, it was his best season at Ohio thus far, with nine wins, eight losses, and three ties. So it just kind of signals a turning point in the way that Rodgers has built this program. As Deering tries to lead Townsend in the right corner. It's deflected out of bounds by a Cleveland State defender. It'll be a throw in for the Bobcats. Deering pressured by Donahue in the right corner. Now Cleveland State takes possession. And now the ref waves the flag, signals out of play. Ball once again going back to the Bobcats and Noah. We're seeing the defensive identities of this team on full display thus far. A lot of physical soccer to this point. It's the score still knotted up nothing, nothing with 26-20 left to play in the first half. As Elena Gutlove leading the charge for Cleveland State. Now leads over to Bianca Sarti, but it's taken away by Paige Knorr. And Molesky tries to lead and what a save there by Sydney Lecky just to keep the ball in bounds. Gonna pass out in front of her. And now Molesky and Kennedy fighting for it. No call by the ref either way. As it'll be a throw in for the Bobcats, Paige Norb will do the honors. Twenty-five and a half minutes to play. In the first half, still nothing, nothing. Morgan Kalika will collect the ball for Ohio in the right corner. Now over to Jenny Santa Cantaria. Interina to Deering. Now the left side, Sydney Lecky. Bobcats back on the attack. Lecky dribbling on the left side, now brings to the middle of the field. Tries to cross into Deering, too far out in front. It's deflected off Brianna Niedermeyer out of bounds. Possession stays with Ohio. Substitution for the Bobcats. Aaron Rodgers making his first move of the afternoon as Maddie Young, a freshman forward from Cincinnati, Ohio, comes in. Her third game played. Also has three shots on the year, the most shots of any non-starter on the Bobcats. And for Young, she's she's a player that has a lot of anticipation around her. She's almost always the first sub in for these Bobcats. And in the exhibition game against Youngstown, Youngstown State, where Ohio won six to one, 
She had three of the goals. So just a lot of anticipation around what Maddie Young might be able to do uh, not only this season, but the next four years. Free kick coming up for Cleveland State after a foul on the Bobcats. As Holbrook gives it a big boot with the right foot. Now Cleveland State on the attack. And now right over into the hands of Ohio goalkeeper Sam Wexel. The Ohio defense has been pretty good today. You know, led by Morgan Colica in the middle and, and Victoria Breeden back there as well. A good team starts from its defense, and they haven't been called into action too many times, but Breeden, Kalika, Nor, and Sensky in the back four have definitely rose to the challenge when needed. Lena Feltovich boots it out of play. Manny Young was looking to cross, but the Bobcats will have a throw in in the left corner. And Paige Nor will be the one to throw in. 5'7", junior, by way of Cincinnati, Ohio. Here's Abby Townsend. Looking to cross in the left corner. Pestered by Feltovich. Now gets the cross in, and it's in the back of the net. Beautiful offense by the Ohio Bobcats. Terrific cross by Abby Townsend, and Maddie Young finds the back of the net. Her first goal of the season and the first goal of the afternoon as the Ohio Bobcats now lead 1-0 with 22.58 left to go in the first half. Well, you said it, won a ball by Abby Townsend down the left side. She made quite the run. She was able to work her way around defenders with some great dribble moves and spin moves, and then a beautiful cross, and Matty Young was just in the perfect position down the right side of the net. And I mentioned it earlier, it was only a matter of time before Young was able to find the back of the net for the first time, and she does it here in game three to give Ohio the one nothing lead over Cleveland State. And now Cleveland State on the attack as the ball deflected out of bounds. And that's the second assist of the year for Abby Townsend. We've seen all afternoon, she's placed a lot of beautiful crosses right in that six yard box, putting a lot of pressure on Stevie Holbrook, and it finally pays off with a goal there from Maddie Young, her first in four shots in this 2019 campaign. Be a Cleveland State corner from the left corner. Elena Gutliff sends it, and it's deflected away by the Bobcats. Cleveland State looking to reset. As now Grace Krosky gets it taken away. Now the Bobcats regain possession. Here's Courtney Dagerdas. Nagardas working from the right side, leans in trying to get to Maddie Young, but now in possession of Cleveland State with Kyla Ransom. As now Ohio flicks the ball out of bounds, possession goes back to Cleveland State. It will be a throw in. Bobcats now up 1 0 with 21 and a half minutes left in the first half. And Noah, that was the first first half goal of the year for this Ohio Bobcat team as well. Uh, again, only a matter of time before Ohio was able to figure it out and get the ball in the back of the net early. It, it's always a, a worrying thing when you go into halftime with a nothing-nothing scoreline, which is what both of the past two games have been for the Bobcats, 0-0 zero, zero at half. But you, you just never know exactly what's going to happen after that. And so for Ohio to give themselves that early advantage... It certainly makes playing the rest of the game, you, you kind of are able to build a strategy around the lead. The Bobcats have had 16 shots in the first half this year as compared to just 11 in the second half. Team that likes to attack early and often. There's a ball out of bounds. Now Cleveland State will have a throw in on the left side. Here's Elena Gutliff at center. Now swing it over to the right side of the field. Here's Lena Feltovich. A 5'6 freshman defender by way of Stowe, Ohio. Feltovich now with it again. And it's deflected out of bounds. And they say we'll take a short break. 20 minutes and change left to go. First half of play with the score, the Ohio Bobcats won. And the Cleveland State Vikings nothing. Bobcats jumping out to an early lead. We'll be right back.
Back with you on Bobcat TV, broadcasting Ohio soccer. Brandon Monty with you alongside Noel Wolf as the Bobcats own a one nothing advantage over the Cleveland State Vikings with 20 minutes and eight seconds to play in this first half. We'll resume with a Cleveland State throw in with Lena Feltovich and so far so good, Noah, for this Bobcat team, especially on the defensive end. I know they're up one nothing, but it's been the defense that has stifled every Cleveland State attack to this point. Yeah, and it's defense turning into offense, really, for Ohio as they've been able to take the ball away and then immediately know what they're going to do with it. That's the important thing. It's one thing to, to get the ball from Cleveland State. It's one thing to stifle them every time. It's another to turn that in to quality, positive, uh, offensive possession, and that is what this Ohio team is able to do so well is get the ball, maintain the ball, and then figure out how to make chances with the ball. Cleveland State now on the attack. Gutlove tries to enter to Bianca Sarti, but Ohio quickly swallows up that attack. Well, substitutions for the Ohio Bobcats. Aaron Rodgers going to his bench. Olivia Darrow, Heather McGuire, and Paige Papanastos now into the game for the Bobcats. State with the ball now, here's Grace Grant on the right side near midfield. Tries to get it to Kennedy, but goes out of play. Back to the Bobcats. Well, we've talked about an impressive freshman up top in Maddie Young, who got her first goal today. But an impressive freshman in the back has been Heather McGuire, the native of Hamilton, Ohio, has been absolutely terrific. She, she has so much experience in the back line, or at least she makes it look like she does because she never seems to be rushed or hasty with the way that she deals with the Cleveland State attack or, or any team that she's playing. It was especially clear when Eastern Kentucky was in town a week ago. But the, the play of Heather McGuire in the back line has been incredibly composed. It looks a lot more like it's the play of a junior or a senior rather than a freshman. Heather McGuire in her third game of the year for the Bobcats has appeared in every match for Ohio. Fairfield High School three-time first team all-conference, two-team all-league. She's a captain as a senior as well as an Adidas National High School Showcase MVP. As the freshman from Hamilton, Ohio, as you mentioned, has been very integral to this back line for Aaron Rodgers. Seventeen fifteen left to go. First half of play. Ohio leading Cleveland State one to nothing. As now two players trip each other up, and it's a foul and a free kick for the Bobcats. There's Olivia Sensky with a big right boot down towards the Cleveland State 18-yard box. And Cleveland State recollects it. Bobcats now with possession. Here's Heather McGuire on the left side at midfield. Now to Maddie Young. Young to Paige Papanastos. Tries to enter in, but once again, Cleveland State stops the attack. And now on the other end. Essence Kennedy unable to control that one with her left foot out of bounds. And Ohio has a throw in with Heather McGuire. And Noah, this Cleveland State offense hasn't really been able to find their footing yet in this season. Only seven shots per game, just 14 total on the year. Is now Ohio on offense. Here's Olivia Page. And lost control of it back to Cleveland State. No, you're right. And, and not only this season has Cleveland State not really found their footing on offense, but in this game as well, they don't seem to have 
I mean, they certainly have a strategy in getting the ball forward, but once it's there, they don't, they don't quite have the same organization that the Bobcats seem to have, the same quick passing. Elena Gutlov now on the left side for the Vikings, but unable to corral this ball. And that's the sort of thing that I'm talking about. Cleveland State there, the Vikings just ran forward, and they, they looked for the options. They thought they found something, but didn't quite play it the right way. And, you know, a miscommunication or two will happen. But to me so far for the Vikings, it just doesn't seem like they're quite able to find that that same kind of strategy and shared mindset that Ohio has had success with this season. And Cleveland State with just one shot on goal in this game, and like you said, a lot of careless passes too for the Vikings. Is on that play, Olivia Gutliff wide open, but was misled, ball way out in front of her, out of bounds. Cleveland State now with possession again. And quickly back to the Bobcats as Olivia Page rouses it. 14-17, left to go, first half. Ohio one, Cleveland State nothing. As Ohio tries to get it to Maddie Young, but just out in front of her, into the arms of Cleveland State goalkeeper Stevie Holbrook. Now for the Vikings, it's Grace Kroski. Kroski, they get it over to Brianna Niedermeyer who has one of two goals this year for Cleveland State, the other belonging to Elena Gutliff. Feltovich. I think is deflected out of bounds by Paige Papanastos, a 5'7 junior forward by way of Orland Park, Illinois. Papanastos just two games played last season, five-time Illinois State select player from 2011 to 2015. And for Papanastos, this is her first time involved this season as she had not played in either of the previous two games. So good to see the junior forward getting involved. Even State throw in to Feltovich, but it goes over the head of number 28, Jemiah Ward. And now Ohio back on the attack. And Noah, a lot of experience back with this Ohio team this year. Papanastos, one player coming back, really no newcomers in the starting lineup this year, that is. A lot of experience on this roster for Aaron Rodgers, and that will certainly help as the season progresses as Ohio back in the attack here, but it's snuffed out by Cleveland State as Holbrook corrals it. And a lot of that, a lot of that experience is in the front line. You have Abby Townsend coming off a great freshman season. She made the All-Mac freshman team last year. And then you have Sydney Leckie and Olivia Molesky right behind, the two seniors who have been a part of some great, or they've put together some great seasons in green and white. And when you have that trio leading the team forward, it's, it's they, they really set the tone for the rest of the team. That, that's basically what it comes down to. There, there are plenty of people that are, that are really in a starting role for the first time, like uh, Jenny Santa Catarina and Serena Dierig. They haven't gotten a ton of time in the starting lineup before this season, but they've started all three matches so far. And then Paige Knorr works her way back into the team after a, a good freshman campaign but uh, two seasons ago, but she didn't have a lot of experience in last year's lineup. The back line, kind of a hodgepodge compared to the way it was last year. But when you've got that attacking core so strong as it is, the rest of the team kind of falls in line. But everybody in the starting lineup has played at least one season in the green and white before this year. Free kick coming up from the right side for Cleveland State. Feltovich will do the kicking, sends it away into the 18-yard box. Jemiah Ward tried to get a foot on it. Now Ward fighting for it with Victoria Breeden. Cleveland State gets it back. Now Breeden heads it out of the box. And a shot fired, but sails far over the goal. As number 12, Meredith Hansen into the game. And her shot sails far to the right as well. Fired from just outside the 18-yard box. Goal kick coming up 
for the Bobcats. Yeah, Hanson in her first appearance this season for Cleveland State, she just came flying in there. And she put a really strong right boot through the ball, but just sailed it over the net. Would have been a tough one for Wexel to deal with, though, had it been closer to the top of the crossbar. One of the few openings that Cleveland State has had offensively in this match thus far. As the Bobcat defense has snuffed out just about every Viking attack. But they're trying again here as when State tries to get across, it's Elizabeth Harper. And it was defended out of bounds and it'll be a corner kick from the left side for the Vikings. Three corner kicks now for Cleveland State, none for Ohio. That's something that Ohio is gonna wanna turn around this season. The kick is away, and it's headed away by Olivia Sensky. Vikings trying to re-enter the box. Scooped up, though, by Wexel, who rolls it out to Heather McGuire. McGuire tries to get it to Maddie Young. They're too far out in front as Kyla Ransom gets it. 9.20 left to go, first half of play. Ohio one, Cleveland State nothing. Ohio operating in the right corner now. What a run from Olivia Dara to get there. As the streak is deflected out of bounds, it'll be a corner kick for the Bobcats, their first of the afternoon. And Olivia Darrow came from basically the middle of the pitch all the way up to the back line to corral the ball and she beat the defender there who seemed like she had the advantage. Niedermeyer I thought was a lot closer to the ball than Darrow was but the freshman just outpaced her. There's Darrow, tries to enter but sails out of bounds. Goal kick for Cleveland State. And Darrow fourth on Ohio this year with two shots, one of which has been on goal at Walsh Jesuit High School. It was honorable mention all league as a junior and a senior won state championships in 2015 and 2016 as well. The freshman midfielder from Cuyahoga Falls, the catalyst for this Ohio offense off the bench as like we have a foul here on Cleveland State. As that will go against number 25, Courtney Kohalich. And a free kick now for Ohio would be Olivia Sensky. Seven fifty-four to go. First half of play. Ohio won. Cleveland State nothing. Ohio looking for their third consecutive victory to start this 2019 season. And Noah, two and zero start. One of the better starts that Ohio has had in recent years. Yeah, tied for the best start in program history. The only other time that Ohio went two and zero was two seasons ago in 2017. So if Ohio were to win today, that would be the most wins to start a campaign for the Bobcats ever. Ohio now throwing in from their own right corner is Olivia Sensky. Sensky, a Mac all freshman team member last season. As McGuire gives it a big boot down the field in the Cleveland State territory collected by Brianna Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer scored the first goal for Cleveland State in their 2-1 to one victory over Akron in double overtime. Their last time out, Cleveland State, both of their matches so far this year, have gone to double overtime. As Ohio now chooses to reset, Victoria Breeden. Here's Olivia Darrow. Darrow at midfield, tries to enter to the right corner. Maddie Young tries to track it down, but unable to locate this ball. Not quite able to run it down. Heads out of bounds, possession Cleveland State in their own left corner. Sydney Hanson to begin for the first time for Cleveland State. The great prospect. Good idea on the entry there from Darrow. Just a little bit too long for Maddie Young, but Young had a lot of space down that right side. 
couldn't quite get to the ball. Jemiah Ward now with it for Cleveland State. As the ball heads out of bounds, off the Bobcats. Possession stays with Cleveland State. Here's Ward near midfield. Ward staying with it as the ball pinballs around between multiple Bobcats and Vikings. That is finally collected by Victoria Breeden. Cleveland State now with possession. Here's Brianna Niedermeyer. Now over to Sydney Hampker. Back to the Bobcats, Lindsey Townsend. Townsend now to the left corner, Maddie Young. And it's kicked out of bounds by Cleveland State. And she tries to appeal. And they say it's going to be Cleveland State possession. Yeah, Ransom tipped it off of Maddie Young to get it out of play. Young was trying to bring it down and just put her foot in the wrong spot, which gives Cleveland State possession, but it looks like Ohio is able to win it back pretty easily with Sensky there. As they clear it back to Wexel. 4.09 left to go. First half of play, Ohio still leading one nothing. Olivia Page fighting for it now. One shot in her last game against Northern Kentucky on August 25th. And what Olivia Page did there was something that Aaron Rodgers has been talking about to his team for a little while. Page realized she couldn't win the first uh, ball off the head. So what she did was she put herself in a good position to win the second one. And it's often that second one that's more important. Because, sure, Cleveland State was able to deflect it backwards, but then they gave it right to Olivia Page. A very smart move from the freshman. Even though it doesn't turn into anything positive for Ohio, it's just the little things that show you that a player's trending in the right direction. Aaron Rodgers will certainly be a fan of that as now Lindsey Townsend gets it to Allie Miller. Rodgers going deep into his bench here in the first half. Going off the def for the Bobcats, now Heather McGuire sends it back over to Allie Miller. Miller to Breeden. Now on the right side on the attack, here's Darrow. Now back to Breeden near midfield. And Cleveland State able to snuff that one out. It's now one on one between Jemiah Ward and Olivia Sensky. But Sensky wins the battle here. Snuffing out the Cleveland State attack. Yeah, I didn't think Sensky was quite in the right position there. She kind of attacked it, or attack, tried to defend there from the kind of the back right side of the player. But what she ended up doing was getting her feet tangled up with the opponent player, Jemiah Ward's feet, as well as the ball. And that just kind of had it bouncing around and a little bit of chaos. And then Sensky was able to recover and use her pace to beat out Ward and get the ball back into safety. So Sensky able to recover when she wasn't quite in the right position. And that's something that comes with the experience that she has. Less than two minutes to play now, first half. Ohio still leading one nothing on the strength of the first goal of the season from Maddie Young. Four different Bobcats now tied for the team lead with one goal apiece. Good defensive play by Lindsey Town said to take the ball away as Ohio regains possession. For the Vikings, Sydney Hampker. Now over to Feltovich. Now Ohio back with possession. Here's Heather McGuire. Cleveland State with it. Trying to get a shot up, and it just That's sails. Good. Over the net as Elizabeth Harper, the junior from Monroeville, Pennsylvania, making her third appearance of the year. A little too far underneath that ball as now we have just under a minute to go 
here in this first half. And Noah, Cleveland State really hasn't been able to get too many clean shots. A lot of their shots coming from very far from the net, sailing way over the goal. Yeah, there haven't really been many chances for Cleveland State, if any at all, that the Vikings think they should have scored. For Cleveland State, they're just taking any chance they can get. And that speaks to how great the Ohio back line has been continuing from last season into this season despite quite a bit of turnover um, in, in terms of personnel from 2018 to 2019. Holbrook holding the ball now in the 18 yard box for Cleveland State. 10 seconds and counting left first half. Eight, seven, six, Olivia Page. Five, four, three, Cleveland State with the ball now. Jemiah Ward will just dribble it out, and the first half comes to a close from Chesapeake Field with the Ohio Bobcats jumping out to an early advantage, leading the Cleveland State Vikings one to nothing.
No, I'm, I'm serious. I'm Back with you for the second half here on Bobcat TV, broadcasting Ohio soccer. Brandon Monty with you alongside Noel Wolf. Bobcats hold a 1-0 lead after one half. Cleveland State will be moving from right to left in the second half. The Bobcats from left to right. And Noah, some observations from the first half. What stood out to you about the Bobcats play as they currently hold a one-goal advantage? Well, what stood out to me is the way that they were able to keep possession when they had it. They weren't trying to play too frantically forward and constantly giving the ball away. It was not only about getting possession, it was about keeping possession and then using that possession to create really strong chances. And they had a few really strong chances, one of them that turned into the goal that gave them the one nothing lead. Bobcats holding the one nothing advantage, looking for their third consecutive victory here to start 2019. Cleveland State comes in 1-0-1 -on, on the year. It's the Bobcats now operating in their own left corner. And ball heads out of play. Be a throw in for Ohio. And Noah, another thing that stands out, even though only two shots on goal for Ohio, they have been putting relentless pressure on this Cleveland State back, back line. And they continue to do it here, too. It's, it's not always about the number of shots on goal or the number of corner kicks you get. It's about where are you holding the possession? How, how much can you get these defenders to run, right? you you got to break through the back line somehow. And a lot of the ways that Ohio does that is just by outrunning and outlasting the defenders. As Abby Town said, this to enter with a cross. And gets it over. They try to re-enter, but it's booted away. By Cleveland State defender Grace Krosky. Wacky did a nice job of tracking that ball down and putting it into the middle of the box, but unfortunately no Ohio attacker trailing that one. And so the chance is wasted. And Cleveland State now trying to put some offense together. Cleveland State just one shot on goal thus far. And as we mentioned in the first half, Noah, they really had to reach for a lot of their shots. Most of their attempts coming from far outside the 18-yard box. This Ohio defense has really been on top of every attack that the Vikings have tried to create. Yeah, it seems like the, the Ohio defenders really know where to be. It's not always about taking the ball away every time or, or pressing or, you know, sometimes it's about stepping into passing lanes and making sure that the ball isn't even going to get forward, let alone knowing what to do when the ball does get there, which Ohio has proven time and time again that they know how to deal with that pressure. And Victoria Breeden, who just had a nice spin move with some footwork to get around Cleveland State there, is one of the defenders that continues to prove that for Ohio. Olivia Sensky, too. Victoria Breeden, previously at Tennessee Tech. In her senior year, a 5'7 defender from Hudson, Ohio. Last year, 19 games played, 11 starts, two assists, four shots, all of which were on goal. And Sensky, another phenomenal defender for Ohio as well. Mack, all freshman team member last year. Now Abby Townsend has it for the Bobcats. 41-20 remaining in this match. Ohio won, Cleveland State nothing. Cleveland State now with possession. Here's Elena Gutlove. Back to Gutlove now, center circle. Lift gets it to the outside, Essence Kennedy. Now Cleveland State retreats and they'll reset here. Giving it to Holbrook, a little dangerous there as Abby Townsend pestering Holbrook. Now Ohio back on offense and Townsend really 
just constant energy, constantly moving towards the ball and putting pressure on defenses. She already has one assist today on a beautiful cross to Maddie Young. Right, Townsend really knows where to be in the front, and that's a tough thing for an attacker to do. Sometimes you can just get lost when you're not playing the ball, but that doesn't happen with Abby Townsend. She's always making sure that she's in the right space. Kalika now in the right corner, try center into the box, deflected away by Cleveland State. Kalika's attempt is snuffed out, but now Ohio on the inside, and they say offside on the Bobcats. As Sydney Leckie jumped the gun just a bit too early there, got behind the defense, but the refs wave it back. Yeah, what was interesting there is not the space that Sydney Leckie found herself in when the ball was played, but even the space that she had once the ball got there. Normally, when the defense. Was wide open. Right. When the defense realizes, oh, shoot, somebody's behind us, we should probably play back there, they just kind of let Leckie have that space. Cleveland State catching a break there as now they try to cross into the box. Elizabeth Harper was pestered by Kalika. As they say, the ball goes back to the Bobcats. Good work there by the 5'3 sophomore defender by way of Aurora, Ohio, who's played in 17 games last year, five starts. Kalika now over to Victoria Breeden. Now Breeden tries to pass it across the field to Paige Knorr, but out of bounds. Be a throw in for Cleveland State in Ohio territory on the right side. Thirty-eight forty-three remaining in this match. Ohio still clinging to a one-nothing advantage. As Ohio snuffs out another Cleveland State attack. Defensive work there by Kalika. Ohio with a throw in now. Greeting in Cleveland State territory. Here's Abby Townsend. Townsend on the left side, putting the dribble moves on display. Looking for a cross. Gets it, but it sails out of bounds behind the goal. Goal kick coming up for Cleveland State. Another great move by Abby Townsend as she continues to show off fancy footwork, which she's done all season long, really in both of the seasons that Abby Townsend has played here in Ohio. She has had some incredible footwork, and she's not afraid to take on two, three, four defenders at a time because she has a lot of confidence in the way that she can play the ball and the way that she can keep possession just on her own, let alone with the passing skills that she brings to the table. As we see a foul for Ohio, it's on Paige Knorr, 5'7", junior defender from Cincinnati, Ohio. And going back to Townsend, six shots already on the year, four of which have been on goal. All freshman team member last year, certainly one of the catalysts for this Bobcat offense. And not only that, but she has a she had the game-winning goal against Eastern Kentucky, the game-winning assist against Northern Kentucky, and if the score line remains the same today against Cleveland State, her assist would be the game winner, winner. today. Certainly has been clutch all year for Ohio. These two players getting tangled up on the left side. Cleveland State assumes possession. Ball deflected out of play. Possession, Cleveland State. Townsend, Ohio's team leader in shots. Shots on goal and tied with three other players in goals. And second in points as well. Cleveland State on the right side now. Here's Bianca Sarti. Sarti looking across. Tries to get it in, but Cleveland State lost the ball and the shot deflects off of Sam Wexel's gloves into the back of the net. And this match is tied. Wexel unable to corral that ball. And Cleveland State is on the board with 36.06 left to go in this match. This game is tied at one. Yeah, it was Elena Gutlove that 
had the shot. And Elizabeth Harper lost the footing on the ball originally, but then it trickled over. And for Ohio, that was just a rare case in which the defense was a little bit unorganized. When the ball got away from the feet of Harper, that's when you expect an Ohio defender to step in, but there was nobody there. And Gutlove just had a free and open shot right at the net. Wexel did the best that she could. She was quick down to her left, and she tried to get a strong hand to it to double punch that one away. But there's only so much you can do with a ball with that much velocity. So 1-1 one, one tie now, 35 and a half minutes to go in the match where Elena Gutlove is her team leading second goal on the season. Ohio now on the attack in the left corner, Abby Townsend. Tries to get the cross and it's headed away by Cleveland State but picked up by Dagerdas. Dagerdas tries to re-enter but Cleveland State able to clear it out. And Derek nearly there. And now Ohio's gonna have to figure out how to play out of the back and continue this offensive push. Ohio State trying to make a push. Sensky sends a boot down into the 18-yard box and collected by Stevie Holbrook. Looked like Olivia Molesky had a chance at that Abby Town said cross, but wasn't quite able to get to it before Cleveland State snuffed it out. Cleveland State now, it's Niedermeyer. Now Gutlove. And Gutlove had it taken away by Dagerdas. And Abby Townsend now pestering Cleveland State, trailing the goalkeeper Stevie Holbrook. Cleveland State has possession now in their own territory right side and well, as we see, just look at how much ground Townsend is covering. Great lateral movement, really just pestering Vikings all over the field. As the ball is out of bounds, possession remains with the Bobcats. Yeah, it's really Townsend's movement up front that was able to win Ohio the ball back there. If Townsend wasn't giving so much pressure to the back defenders for Cleveland State, they would have been able to press up the field a lot more just like they wanted to. Instead, Townsend really put them under pressure and made them panic, made them put the ball not where they wanted to do it and gives it back to Ohio. We'll see if they can convert. Dagerdas tries to enter to the middle of the field. Cleveland State takes it away. Molesky nearly won it back there in the middle. Cleveland State back with an hour is Riley Busson. Thirty-three minutes exactly left to go in the match. One-one tie, or the second half, I should say. Thirty-three minutes left. Vikings and Bobcats even at one apiece. In a game that has seen a lot of chippy and defensive play. And that's just kind of the way that Ohio is. The Bobcats are a very physical team. They're not going to give up anything easy. They're never. I don't think this Bobcat team is ever going to be out pushed, out bodied, right? Th these Ohio defenders use their physicality as much as they can. Like Molesky there was able to body up Gutlove. And Gutlove trying to plead her case to the referee, and she, but he's not having it as he signals a push motion there as one number 11 pushes another, Molesky sent to the ground. It's a free kick for Ohio, foul on Cleveland State. And it was Molesky that kind of initiated the contact there, but what Gutlove did wrong was just using her hands too much. She looked like she had a grab or a, a grip of Molesky's jersey. And so it's, it's that pressure, that physicality that Ohio is able to put on their opponents and it's something that some teams aren't used to. 31-30 to go in the second half. Ohio one, Cleveland State one. As Cleveland State will bring in three substitutions. McKenna Donahue, Grace Grant, both starters coming back into the game for the Vikings. 
as manager Dallas Boyer making some more changes, bringing in more personnel of his starting 11 back in. And here's Bianca Sarti in the right corner. Looking for a cross, but it's snuffed out now in the hands of Olivia Sensky for the Bobcats. Sensky downfield. Townsend tried to head it, came up short. Tony Dixon now with it for Cleveland State. It's Brianna Niedermeyer. Now McKenna Donahue, the left side working near midfield. And Ohio with it now, Olivia Molesky tried to lead Courtney Doggerdoss, but just a bit too far on front, a little miscommunication there for the Bobcats, possession back to Cleveland State. Right, just when Ohio thought they had caught a break and dispossessed the Vikings, they end up giving it right back. There's some more. And Jersey's being grabbing. tangled yeah. up here between Molesky and Gutlove. A little bad blood being generated here. Between the two number 11s as Ohio regains possession. Another foul from Gutlove. And there is no love lost between Molesky and Gutlove in this match. They've been going at it just about all afternoon. As Sensky's kick it was just a bit too far. Goal kick coming up for Cleveland State. Serena Dierig tried to get to that ball but was cut off. And again, just seeing more of that chippy play. As both teams trying to gain the upper hand here midway through the second half. Cleveland State now, it's Bianca Sarti. Now Grace Grant. Back to the Bobcats at center circle. Here's Dagerdas. Dagerdas to Kalika. But lost the handle on it. Now Gutlove regains control for the Vikings. And some fans here at Chesapeake Field calling for offsides on number 15 for the Vikings, Bianca Sarti. As Ohio back with possession. Dagerdas now at midfield. Is Olivia Sensky. I'm on the left side, Paige Knorr. And she'll kick it over to Sam Wexel. The goalkeeper will reset for the Bobcats. Victoria Breeden. Breeden, Dagerdas tries to handle the pass, but couldn't quite do so as to flex it out of bounds with her right foot. Possession back to Cleveland State. And more substitutions now for Dallas Boyers Vikings. As it will be number 12, Meredith Hansen, a 5'7 sophomore, midfielder from Westlake, Ohio, a two time all conference member at Westlake High School, coming back into the game for Cleveland State. Tony Dixon with it for Cleveland State. Now over to Kyla Ransom. Lena Feltovich. On the right side, Essence Kennedy. Kennedy gets it downfield. Cleveland State on the attack, but a great defensive play to slide the ball out of bounds by the Bobcats. Nice job there by the senior defender, Victoria Breeden, to step in the way of the Viking attack. Yeah, Breeden in the back line just kind of found themselves playing a little bit too far forward, and Cleveland State was able to slip in behind. But Breeden didn't panic. She made sure she was in the right position to play the ball. And she gets it out over the end line. The corner kick snapped the most optimal scenario here, but it's better than a goal. 
The corner is away. It set it out of bounds. And last touch by number three of Cleveland State, Grace Krosky. It'll be a goal kick for Ohio. Even 26 minutes remaining in the second half. Match still tied, one to one. Maddie Young striking for Ohio in the first half. Elena Gutlev for Cleveland State here in half number two. Ohio with possession now. Here's Townsend to Deary. Outside to the right, Doggerdas. Now Molesky. Molesky in the right corner, pestered by two Vikings, looks for the cross. She'll get it, but it's just behind the goal. Cleveland State able to apply just enough pressure to throw off the cross from Molesky. The attack is snuffed out, a goal kick coming up for Cleveland State. But this is exactly what Ohio's been trying to do this whole second half that they haven't been able to is, well, first of all, attack, and second of all, attack down the sides. That's really where Ohio thrives is when they can get some one-on-one -on -one matchups in the corners and then send something into the box. That, that was a perfect example of Ohio's strategy right there. Molesky's crossed just a little bit far. We saw a plethora of great crosses in the first half. Really, Ohio applying relentless pressure to the Cleveland State defense, but we're not seeing as much of that here in half number two. As we are still tied one to one with 24 and a half minutes remaining here in the second half. There's Jemiah Ward for Cleveland State. It's deflected out of bounds. Possession remains with the Vikings. And we've got a, looks like a call here against the Bobcats. Free kick coming up for Cleveland State. And Lena Feltovich will be the one to take it. Haven't seen too many free kicks either way in this game. Uh, Cleveland State seems to have a strategy. Eltovich sends it into the box. And it's pinballed around and deflected out of the box by the Bobcats. Cleveland State trying to regain possession. Feltovich tries to strike at it, but it was deflected by Sensky. And Ohio able to clear it away. Another terrific defensive play by Victoria Breeden to stagnate the Vikings offense. Well, we're just about halfway through this second half. And we've seen a number of substitutions for Cleveland State. But for Ohio, I don't think we've seen a single one in we the second not. half. As now, Cleveland State back on the attack, and the shot is deflected. Terrific work by Wexel. McKenna Donahue tried one off the deflection, but Wexel able to send two shots away. Cleveland State back on the attack. Now they try to enter to Donahue in the six-yard box, but Sam Wexel is there to make the stop. Terrific goalkeeping by the sophomore. Yeah, the double save about 15, 30 seconds ago for Sam Wexel. And then just as Cleveland State looks like they're poised to get something else going, Wexel steps in and claims the ball for herself. That is... Some tremendous goalkeeping from Wexel to have the composure and the shot-stopping ability that she did there. First saves of the season for Wexel. 22 minutes now remaining in the second half. Still 1-1. Tremendous job of goalkeeping there by the 5'10 sophomore. Ohio back on offense. Here's Dagardas. Trying to get it to Dierig, but lost it. But now Dagardas re-enters with a header to Dierig. But Cleveland State snuffs it out again. Ohio trying to reapply the pressure here is Morgan Kalika to Molesky. Now to Dagardas. Try to get it to Townsend. Collects it, now fires with the left foot, but far left of the left post. Nails out of bounds. 
Goal kick coming up for Cleveland State. As Noah, we're seeing our first substitution of the second half as Heather McGuire enters the game as a defensive replacement for Paige Knorr. Yeah, 24 minutes in before we see the first substitution. I think it had to be at least seven or eight for Cleveland State in the same time frame. In the left corner now, Townsend, winning with Jemiah Ward. And they say Cleveland State possession now. Separating from their own territory in the right corner. And now Ohio quickly regaining possession. Good heads up play there by Molesky to see the one on one battle and deflect the pass off one of the members of the Vikings. Now Molesky has it on the attack, fires away from far outside the goal and it sails over the uprights out of play. Another goal kick for Cleveland State as we approach 20 minutes remaining here in this second half. And it appears we will take a short break here when we return, 20.04 left in the second half. Ohio won, Cleveland State won. Back with you, 20.04 remaining in the second half. Ohio won, Cleveland State won, and no, what have been some of your biggest observations here through the first 25 minutes of the second half? Well, in the second half, Cleveland State has come out with a different energy, which you, you've got to expect after they, they're down one nothing. After the first half, they get some words of wisdom from second year or third year head coach Dallas Boyer during the halftime break, and of course they're gonna come out with some different strategies, but they've been able to keep possession a lot during the second half. Olivia Darrow now tries to cross in, and it's sent away by the Vikings. And now a player is down in the goalie box. It's the goalkeeper for Cleveland State, Stevie Holbrook. Took a nasty collision 
inside the box and now will be treated to by the Cleveland State staff. We'll step aside while Holbrook gets treatment. Back with you after a bit of a injury scare, Cleveland State goalkeeper Stevie Holbrook, a nasty collision in the six yard box, deflecting away across from Olivia Darrow. His backup goalkeeper for the Vikings, Miranda Thomas, was warming up, but it appears Holbrook is okay and is going to remain in the match. Yeah, that's a scary situation from what it looked like Holbrook was in midair trying to leap and deflect a tough cross from Olivia Darrow. And she did that successfully, but sort of a wrong place, wrong time moment for Holbrook and one of the Ohio attackers. And it was Holbrook that caught the brunt of that uh, collision. But she seems to be just fine in her own net. Now Olivia Darrow with it. On the right side, Victoria Breeden. Reedon tries to enter into Townsend, but it's sent away by the Vikings. Now operating from the left side, Sydney Leckie. Bobcats reset. And now a collision between Santa Catarina. She appears to be okay. Tough play there as Bobcats back on the attack. They try to get it to Leckie, but couldn't get her left foot on it. As it's sent out of bounds, Cleveland State possession will be a goal kick. I think Lucky might have been a touch offside there too had she gotten involved. But since she stayed out of the play, they just let that trickle out for a goal kick. Now 17.50 and counting remaining in the second half. As Dallas Boyer making more substitutions here for the Vikings. Cleveland State on offense here is Gutluff. Gutluff tries to lead Kennedy. A battle brewing between Kennedy and Heather McGuire as McGuire sends it out of bounds. Possession remains with Cleveland State. And we're seeing McGuire's energy on full display. He's tried to catch Cleveland State napping off the throw in and booted the pass out of bounds once again. Cleveland State now in the box says, Jemiah Ward takes a rip at it, but it goes far right. Good defense by the Bobcats, goal kick coming up for Ohio. Ward was working not only against two Ohio defenders, but also against a very tough angle. One that she wasn't phased by, she thought she had the right look at it, but she puts it past the post. Darrow now to Matty Young. To Townsend in the right corner looking for a cross and it's deflected out of play by Tony Dixon. A corner kick coming up for the Bobcats under the right corner. Just their second corner kick of the afternoon. Abby Townsend will kick the corner for the Bobcats. And she'll pass it over. 
Now into the box. Header attempt from Molesky. Rolls left of the goal. And a goal kick now for Cleveland State. Yeah, Molesky was a little bit late to the ball when it swung in. She thought about, well, well, she needed to get more power behind it, first of all. But she also needed to swing her head around in a different direction to try and redirect it closer to the goal. And I think the ball was just moving a little bit too quick for Molesky to be able to do either of those things. But she's one of the best players Ohio has in the air. Cleveland State back with it. Here's Gutlow. And it's sent out of play. Possession back to Ohio. Ohio resets to the goalkeeper, Sam Wexel. 15-13 remaining on the clock. Match still tied at one. Is Olivia Darrow with it now. And Kalika lost it out of bounds, but it was deflected by Cleveland State. It was Kalika again, down to Darrow. Cleveland State, Essence, Kennedy. Kennedy tries to lead into the 18-yard box. Kalika defending. And Cleveland State tries to send it back in, and it's deflected out of bounds by Breeden. So a yep. couple attempts snuffed out there by the Bobcats. Elizabeth Harper trying to get a shot at it, but Breeden with a denial. And it was Courtney Koholich that was the one creating a lot of the trouble as she snuck in behind the back line and found herself in a lot of space. Brianna Niedermeyer sends the corner kick and a header is pinballed around the 18 yard box and finally sent away by Bobcats. And when the re-entry, here's Lena Feltovich. And they try to get a shot, but Ohio able to deny it. And now Maddie Young able to keep the ball in play, terrific defense there by the Bobcats. Cleveland State had a couple of good looks inside the 18-yard box. Yeah, the most crucial touch came from Morgan Kalika, the sophomore, was able to step in when it looked like Elizabeth Harper was going to have an easy shot. Instead, Kalika just got the, the smallest of toe taps on the ball to get it away from Harper and then into Kalika's control. And that is what really sent the, or what really got the Bobcats out of danger. Elena Gutlove tries to enter, but it's snuffed out by Wexel. That takes a lot of bravery. And good heads up play there, because like you said, it does take a lot of bravery because Courtney Kaholik was running in on the attack and was very close to that ball. A good heads up play by Wexel. As now Ohio unable to get anything going on the offensive end. And stay back with it. Brianna Niedermeyer. Grace Krosky back to Niedermeyer, left side. Here midfield, Molesky deflects it off Niedermeyer, and it stays in play and rolls out of bounds. Terrific play by Olivia Molesky, showing the aggressiveness, putting Brianna Niedermeyer on her heels. And that's one of the things, too, for Molesky. It's not always about knowing exactly what you're going to do with the ball every single time you have it. For Molesky, she was just trying to get there, put a little bit of pressure on. And what she ended up doing, well, she had to, happened to be in the right place at the right time, and that's all she needed to do. Now Gutliff enters into the 18-yard box. Shot is saved by Wexel. Essence Kennedy had a great look at it on an even better feed by Gutliff, but a terrific save by Wexel. As now Kalika sends an attack away. And they say a foul there. And possession back to Ohio. Yeah, Niedermeyer got that one with the forearm. So that'll give Ohio the free kick. And Sensky's just looking for the person in the most space, which looks to be Darrow down the right side. Now Darrow in the right corner, looking for a cross. And it's deflected. Out of bounds by Brianna Niedermeyer. Corner kick coming up for Ohio, their third of the match as a substitution. Now for Aaron Rodgers and the Bobcats. It's a corner kick for the Cats. As Lindsey Townsend, the 5'6 sophomore, into the game. 
Santa Catarina is out. Abby Townsend in the corner from the right corner. 11 minutes to play, still tied at one. Corner is away, and the shot sails way over the goal. Maleski had a decent look at it there. It just airmailed that ball. There's a goal kick will now ensue for the Vikings. Arguably the best chance the Bobcats have had here in the second half. And what other person would you really want to have that chance than Maleski? Just not quite able to get the right footing on that ball. Right, she got a little bit too much underneath it. She put the correct amount of power behind the ball. She knew that it wasn't going to be, she, it wasn't just a redirect. That's, that's something where you have to put your own power behind the shot. And Molesky really reared back and gave it all that she had. But unfortunately, just a little bit too much underneath the soccer ball rather than kind of on top of it as she was looking for. Jemaya Ward fights for possession now for Cleveland State in their right corner. And Ward and Sinski going at it. Possession flag waves to the Bobcats. A good defensive work there by Olivia Sinski, the 5'10 sophomore defender from Powell, Ohio. Played in 20 games last year, starting 16 of the key returning members to this Ohio back line. Here's Darrow in the center circle. Anna Maleski tries to lead Townsend, but unable to do so. Yeah, that was less of a bad pass and more of a great step in by Tony Dixon, the redshirt senior defender for Cleveland State. We haven't seen the Vikings really cut off the passing lanes too often for Ohio, but that was one example of them doing that very, very well. Senski clears the ball out of bounds over towards the Cleveland State bench as we are now under nine minutes in the second half. Score still tied 1-1 between Ohio and Cleveland State. Three shots on goal in the match so far for Ohio, four for the Vikings. Five corners for the Vikings, three for the Bobcats. Here's Maleski. Their own territory clears it out to the Vikings. However, here's Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer tries to instigate the offense on the left side. Back to Niedermeyer. In the left corner, looking across. Boots it with her left foot. But the shot is sent away. Cleveland State not even able to get a shot off there. It was Sidney Leckie. It came all the way back and just found the ball right in the middle of the 18-yard box. Before it got past one Cleveland State attacker, and it was on its way to another one, but Lucky just ran in there and said, absolutely not. Niedermeyer throwing in for the Vikings. There's Elizabeth Harper. Harper just outside the 18-yard box. Now Kaholik. Gutluff, putting the dribble moves on display, tries a shot from just outside the 18 yard box, but it sails over the net and a bit to the right. Goal kick coming up for Ohio. And Noah, neither team really able to get a lot of great looks at the net here in the second half. You know, I think both teams are just kind of searching for their identity on offense. There hasn't been a lot of organized play. It's, it's been very much back and forth, and I'm guessing the possession numbers would support that as it just seems to go in a teeter-totter. All of a sudden, we're on Ohio's attacking side now. Townsend delivers to Darrow. Darrow tries a shot, but right into the arms of Stevie Holbrook. And it didn't look like Darrow got as much of that ball as she would have liked to. And that's a tough angle, too. You're on the right side of the goal, and Darrow went for the right foot there. She, it looked like it was playing toward her left foot, decided to play it onto her right, which is the tougher shot to do across the body toward it the goal. It looked a bit off balance. Right, and, but she was able to, to put it on goal, and it kind of had that knuckling action. You compare it to a knuckleball in baseball where it doesn't have a lot of spin, and 
kind of unpredictable, but it didn't quite have the height for that action to take place. So, but, but I was surprised mostly to see Darrell put that on her right foot rather than her left. Town set now at the left side towards midfield. All deflected out of bounds. They say possession Cleveland State. 5.43 and counting left in the second half. Still knotted up. The score is at 1-1. I will say, though, that on that last attempt by Darrow, I think she was wise to go for goal because she was trying to catch the goalkeeper, Holbrook, off guard. And I think she really did. I don't, I don't think Holbrook was expecting a shot there. I believe I she was expecting that a, cross. A cross, exactly. To Molesky. So a good idea by Dara to get the shot off there. She just needed a little bit more power and a little bit more direction. Ball is sent out of play. Possession remains with Cleveland State and Ohio Territory on the right side as we approach five minutes remaining here in the second half. Both of Cleveland State's matches on the year have gone to overtime. As now Cleveland State will have a corner, their sixth of the afternoon. And Elena Gutlove will kick that corner. Big opportunity for the Vikings. Gutlove raises her right arm and is ready. The kick is away. And the header is to the left of the goal, out of bounds. Header not up to scratch there, and it's Ohio's possession on a goal kick. Good opportunity there for Cleveland State. Ohio a little bit unorganized in defense, but they were able to do enough to deal with the threat and keep this game tied. Four minutes now remaining, still 1-1. Here's Essence Kennedy. On the right side now, Gutluff. Gutluff pestered by Sensky. Sensky able to take it away. Sends it out of play. Possession remains with Cleveland State with three and a half minutes to play in the second half. Throw in goes. To Kennedy again out of play. There's Noah Cleveland State trying to put one last ditch effort here on offense for the decider. Here's Gutlov now in the box. Tries to get a shot, and they say last touch is off Ohio. And defender Olivia Sensky. 50 50 play there as Sensky and Gutlov were fighting for it on the left side of the six yard box and now Gutlove will have a corner seventh on the afternoon. The kick is away and it's behind the net. The corner goes for not. Tack comes empty and Ohio will have a goal kick. And that's a huge break for the Bobcats with the way that Gutlove has been able to send the ball in today. In fact, she has the, the one goal for Cleveland State. So Ohio is well aware of the skill that Gutlove has and the precision that she is able to command. But on that one, just put it behind the net. A rare misstep with a long ball like that for Gutlove. Elizabeth Harper looks to cross, but it's deflected. Good defense by the Bobcats as Olivia Odaro takes control. Townsend wins it out of bounds. And now two minutes remaining here in the second half. Both teams, as you mentioned, Noah, searching for that answer offensively, and they're running out of time to find it. Bobcats now controlling the left side. Lecky, but lost it to Feltovich. Kennedy being pestered at midfield, wanted the call, didn't get it. And in the right corner, Bianca Sarti unable to run it down. Possession back to Ohio. Clock reads 115 remaining in the second half. Ohio 1, Cleveland State 1.
Both teams fighting hard for possession here. They try to put one last offensive attack together. One minute remaining, Bobcats in control. Here's Townsend in the left corner. Townsend tries a cross. Maddie Young unable to collect it. And now it's Elena Gutlove for the Vikings. And a lot of frustration on the opposite sideline, Noah, from both managers. Dallas Boyer and Aaron Rodgers both barking at the referees as we now have just 20 seconds remaining in the second half. Yeah, it looks like we're destined for overtime in this one, unless somebody can find a literal last second answer. Here's Breeden to Kalika. Eight seconds remaining. Maddie Young on the right side. Ball is deflected out of play as the clock ticks down to zero and the second half comes to a close and we've got overtime here at Chesa Field. Your score after regulation. Ohio won, Cleveland State won. We'll be right back for overtime.
NCAA overtime is two 10-minute overtimes. Over the first goal ends the match. As Noah, the second straight game that the Bobcats have gone to overtime and third straight for Cleveland State. They've been a double overtime in each of their first two contests on the season. Yeah, every game at Chessa Field this year has been an overtime contest for the Bobcats as they defeated Eastern Kentucky just over a week ago using or using about five minutes in the first overtime. And then, yeah, for Cleveland State, you said it, two double overtime matches for the Vikings this season. One a victory at home against Kent State, one a draw at Akron. Cleveland State now with it. McKenna Donahue sends the pass in, and ref blows the whistle. As it appears, will be a free kick for Cleveland State. Didn't look like anybody wanted to take it at first. Didn't look like everyone was running anywhere but the ball. It's Tony Dixon, the 5'8", redshirt senior defender. Will take the free kick for the Vikings. Dixon sends the kick in. And it's headed away by Olivia Sensky. Dixon will let this one just roll out of play. It'll be a throw in for number eight of the Vikings, Brianna Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer to the left corner to Jemiah Ward. Ward poked out of bounds by Kalika. Bobcats looking to continue keeping the pressure on the Vikings. Here's Niedermeyer in the left corner. Tries to send a cross, but deflected out of play by Kalika. Another good heads up play. And the eighth corner of the afternoon coming up for the Vikings. Niedermeyer will do the honors. Niedermeyer's ready. Kick is away. And the ball is pinballed around the box. Wexel not quite able to get her hands on it. As now both teams fighting for possession in the 18-yard box. Ref blows the whistle and possession back to Ohio. And a close call there, Noah, as Wexel out of the six-yard box there tried to reach out and grab the ball with both hands. Wasn't quite able to do so. Yeah, Ohio definitely catches a break. Wexel was smart to go out to it, but she just found herself in a pile of humanity, unable to corral it herself but got lucky that it was punched away from goal rather than towards it. And now we see the second pass intercepted by McKenna Donahue of the Vikings here in this overtime period. Ohio back with it now. It's Townsend and Dixon battle for the ball in the right corner. Dixon sends it out of play. Bobcat possession will be a throw in. Dagerdas hands over to Morgan Kalika, and throws in. Now the right corner, Maddie Young. Kalika over to Dagerdas. Dagerdas trying to put the dribble moves on display. Now Kalika enters into the box, but it's scooped up by Stevie Holbrook. 6.40 remaining in the first overtime period. Team still tied one to one. Jemiah Ward now for Cleveland State. Ward swarmed by three Bobcats, but somehow McKenna Donahue comes away with an unlucky bounce for Ohio. Now tries to lead it to Kaholic, but Dagerdas was all over it. Yeah, Dagerdas doing a nice job of tracking back there, getting herself in the right position and coming off that passing lane. That's the way that Ohio really likes to play defense with plenty of pl pressure, sure, but also making sure that they inherit the right space and cut off the passes of their opponent. It's Olivia Molesky. Molesky resets at midfield. Now over to Sensky. Left side, Ohio tries an entry. Now Dagerdas. And leads Townsend just a bit too far. Now Gutliff has control for Cleveland State. 
Gutlove leads Essence Kennedy into the right corner. Looking to cross, but terrific defensive play by Heather McGuire. And then a great touch by Lecky to get around her defender. See if Ohio can capitalize on a little bit of a counterattack opportunity. On the counterattack, here come the Bobcats. Maddie Young on the left side. Young tries to get a cross in, but unable to gain anything of it. Goes out of bounds. Possession Cleveland State as we're now halfway through this first overtime period. 4.48 and counting remaining on the clock. I think for Young there, she might have just waited a little bit too long. She had control over the left side, and by slowing the game down a little bit, she only allowed Cleveland State defenders to get back. I understand what she was trying to do, wait for a couple more attacking options, but those options never came. And I think Young was better off trying to use the advantage that Ohio already had, which was not necessarily a numbers advantage, but just the advantage of pressing forward and catching Cleveland State's defense off guard. By slowing the game down, you lose that kind of off guard surprise advantage. And that allowed the Vikings defense to take shape. And by the time that Young decided to cross it in there, there was still only one or two options and she didn't find either one. Townsend was running up the middle. But as you mentioned, Young unable to find her is now under four minutes to play in the first overtime period. Cleveland State, Tony Dixon. And Niedermeyer. Dixon has to get it over to Feltovich and does. Feltovich now to the middle. Here's Krosky. Krosky to Gutliff. Fancy footwork there on the pass to Kennedy. But Ohio able to snuff out the attack. Now here's Molesky. Nothing going offensively for either team so far in this first overtime period. See if that changes. And now a player down on the left side. Refs don't blow the whistle. And manager Dallas Boyer not happy about the no call there as one Viking slams to the ground on the left side. Still Ohio possession. There's Townsend. All into the middle. Back to Cleveland State with Grace Krosky. Two twenty-two left to go, first overtime. Neither team has really had a good opportunity at the back of the net so far in the overtime period. For the Vikings, McKenna Donahue. Donahue looking for a cross on the right side. Instead dumps it off to Feltovich. Now Feltovich sends a cross and it's deflected out of play. And it will be a corner for the Vikings. Their ninth of the afternoon. And Elena Gutlove will once again be the corner kicker for Cleveland State. In the first two games for the Bobcats, they'd given up nine corner kicks in total. They've given up nine today and only been able to be the beneficiary of three. Corner is away into the box, and the shot doesn't quite have enough oomph on it there. It's multi to midfield with Niedermeyer. Now over to Kaholik. Here's Niedermeyer again. And a good slide there. Nice play by Courtney Dagerdas to stop the Cleveland State attack. McKenna Donahue in the left corner. And last touch is off Donahue. Just lost her footing there. Careless dribbling. It's a giveaway for the Vikings. Goal kick now for the Bobcats as there's under a minute left here in this first overtime period. Midfielders Donahue now to Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer tries to start the attack, but it's swooped up by Ohio's Kalika. Here's Kaholik for Cleveland State. 
Now Kennedy swarmed by three Bobcats. Good defensive work there by Ohio. Clear another attack. As there's now just 10 seconds remaining here in the first overtime period. Five seconds to go. Kaholik has control at midfield. And she will just boot it over to Niedermeyer in Cleveland State territory. And the first overtime period comes to an end. And the score is still tied one to one as Noah, neither team really able to get anything going offensively. A very chippy overtime period to say the least defense is winning out. Yeah, not, not too many great chances for either team. You got to wonder what Aaron Rodgers' strategy is here as Ohio hasn't seen too many great chances. So really, I think Ohio needs to go back to whatever was working for them way back in the first 45 minutes to see if they can find Back with you for the second overtime period. Apologize for any technical difficulties you may be experiencing as Ohio and Cleveland State still knotted up at one. Both teams with 10 minutes left to make something happen. Noah, both offenses running stagnant in the first overtime period of this one. As what do you think the message was for Aaron Rodgers during the break between overtime periods to the Ohio Bobcats? I mean, I think it's all about figuring out what's worked for this team in the past and making it work again As here in the Gutliff second overtime. Sends a quick shot here, just 30 seconds into the second overtime. And Sam Wexel able to corral it. Cleveland State moving from left to right. The Bobcats from right to left. Cleveland State. Trying to work quickly, but Ohio with possession now. Here's Matty Young. Now Heather McGuire. On the left side now, Santa Catarina to Townsend. Townsend back to McGuire at midfield. The Bobcats will reset. To get it into Olivia Page. It came up empty with the right foot. But Kalika able to win it back. Ohio on the right side. Here's Darrow. Darrow with a cross into the box, but Cleveland State sends it away. At midfield now, here's Gutlove. Two Ohio defenders to beat. Even four on fours, he tries to get it into Kennedy, but good heads up play by Sam Wexel to come out to the edge of the 18 yard box and scoop up the ball before Kennedy could get a foot on it. Kennedy appealing for a foul by Heather McGuire, but I think for McGuire, she was just inhabiting the space that she's entitled to, and she knew exactly what she was doing there. McGuire made sure that she was in the right position to block Kennedy from going to the ball, and that, that is exactly what you're entitled to do as a defender, that's exactly what you're supposed to do, is try to get to the ball, and in doing so, cut off the attacker from getting to the ball. Darrow now to Townsend in the right corner. Tries the entry pass to Maddie Young, just out of the reach of Maddie Young. Beautiful entry by Townsend, similar to the one they had in the first half. Very close. And it Young nearly trickled in itself. Yes, it did. It was meant to be a pass, but just went to the left of that left post. Still tied at one here. Three minutes into the second overtime period. Seven minutes to play. 
Jemai Award for Cleveland State. Pushing on the right side, tries to get the entry pass and it goes just to the left of the Cleveland State goal. Ward putting some pressure on the Bobcats here and Noah, two contrasting overtime periods here. They're neither team really able to get any kind of good shots in the first overtime period. We see Ohio nearly puts one in and then Jemiah Ward nearly does the same for Cleveland State, both missing just to the left of the goal. Right, but even so, you can see how evenly matched these teams are. And I mean, the first evidence, we're in double overtime right now. They, they, neither team has been able to find an advantage over the other through 100 minutes so far, 104. And we continue to be tied, but yeah, the other evidence is just it continues to teeter-totter back and forth. Here's Olivia Page to Maddie Young. On the left side, the 18 yard box, the shot just to the left of the left post again. Tried to go the upper 90 in the left corner. Just off the mark, had a good look at it. As we remain tied at one through nearly 105 minutes of soccer. 5.40 to play. Teams knotted up at one. And a foul called on Ohio. Free kick for Cleveland State. Brianna Niedermeyer takes possession at midfield. Here's Gutluff. And Gutluff's pass intercepted. Terrific heads up play by Sydney Leckie. Leckie tries to enter to Townsend. She has an opening on the left side of the box. Fires away and the shot is deflected by Holbrook. Townsend tried to go top shelf. Phenomenal goalkeeping, however, by Stevie Holbrook. As Ohio back in the attack here in the right corner. Across into the box, Maddie Young tries to head it in. It's off the chest of Holbrook again. Maddie Young getting another attempt at it on a header on a beautiful cross right in front of the six yard box. But Stevie Holbrook continues to prove that she's defensive player of the week in the Horizon League. My goodness, Holbrook has had some tough shots to contend with as Townsend's was nearly undefendable. I mean, Townsend saw that the, le that the near post was completely guarded, so she went to the far post and Holbrook was able to come off that post. Here's Townsend with a cross into the 18 yard box. As Vikings and Bobcats fighting for it left and right, it's cleared out. Now with Santa Caterina with it. Four minutes left, still even as you said, Noah Holbrook surviving a barrage of attacks for the Bobcats as Olivia Page tries to send one in from a distance, but it sails far left as both teams making substitutions now. Olivia Molesky coming back in. That's a big move for the Bobcats. And a much needed one too. Molesky entering today's match, second in the MAC in goals and points and first in assists as well. She had two assists in the contest here a week ago against Eastern Kentucky, including a game winner, game winning assist in overtime. She also had the game winning goal at Northern Kentucky last Sunday. Little over three minutes left to go. Both teams fighting tooth and nail for that decider. Here's Lecky now to Townsend. Now at midfield, Olivia Molesky. Molesky. Now to Lecky to Townsend. Townsend to Olivia Page. In the 18 yard box, now to Townsend. Town said, tries to enter in miscommunication there, and no, they get it to Leckie, and it's nearly sent in. And they say offside. As Townsend's pass was saved by Leckie right on the line as it was about to go out of play. And it looks like Morgan Kalika was there to try to send the shot in off the feed from Leckie. But they call offside. Back on the attack, here comes Ohio. Abby Townsend in the left corner. Boots one across the field, but nothing comes of it. Now Olivia Page. And the attack snuffed out by Kaholik of the Vikings. Two minutes, two minutes. 
Paige trying to settle that one. I wonder if she was better off just trying to go first time with a long boot through it. It's not a bad idea to settle it, just Cleveland State had so many numbers back, and there were two people swarming her immediately after she tried to take the first touch and calm it down. Here's Kennedy. Kennedy had it taken away by Molesky. Now Molesky and Kennedy fighting for it on the left side. Things getting physical as McGuire sends one up the field. Now to Townsend. Townsend to Lecky. 1.20 to play. Here comes Lecky. Now to Townsend in the left corner.